Hey everybody, it's me Kogon, and I'm gonna teach you how to survive your first day and night in Abiotic Factor. Before we start, let's get into character customization, and I think the most important thing to secure here is trying to get the fanny pack trait. You permanently gain two extra hotbar slots. As far as I know, you cannot obtain these two extra slots in any other way, and it also costs a large 10 starting points, so it's pretty massive. You don't need the fanny pack, but I highly recommend that you get it so that way you have some more extra space in your inventory. The best way to take this is to go with Summer Intern, that way you have 12 starting points. But overall, you choose how you play and don't worry too much about whether you have the fanny pack or not because it doesn't make it game breaking. So honestly, pick whatever job you want to start off with and whatever trait, just don't make it too hard for yourself if you're a new player. And we'll start the game, but I will note I am playing this with my best friend Chopsticks, so I will have a bit of extra help. But you can play this game solo, so you don't need the extra help, I assure you. Although we're inside a facility, there is a day and night cycle in the game. Morning begins at 6 a.m. and then at 9 p.m. it's nighttime. Once it hits nighttime, the power will go off in the facility. Not only does it go dark from the lights going off, but also all power sockets will be unavailable for use. So this video will help you with preparing for the night. While we're in this first area, the time will not start, so don't worry about rushing out of here just yet. Instead, take the time to survey what's going on and what you can see around you. Bathrooms will be a great place for you to relieve yourself, but also, sinks can be a good source for you to wash yourself off when you get dirty or drink water. In this closet here, you'll find a chef's hat. I recommend you put it on to save some inventory space. I didn't do so here because I forgot, but don't be like me and just do it yourself. You'll find the med kit nearby, and inside you'll find some healing items. Vending machines are located to the left of Dr. Thule. Using your cash, you can buy some snacks that don't perish. Until you leave the starting area, your needs actually won't start going down. So don't worry about hunger yet, just save all the snacks and food you get. For now, I recommend you try to grab every single item you see, and if you get too full, just drop it on the ground for now. You can always come back to it later before it despawns, so don't worry about that. Take a mental note of these vents. You'll be coming back here for an important item that can only be accessed at night. Don't think you can avoid the night in this game because you'll probably have to spend your time at night gathering and moving around, so get used to it. For now, I would say try to keep some duct tape and some metal pipes you find along the way on you. These are all needed to make your first crafting bench. Alongside with crafting, it also prevents enemies from spawning nearby, so it'll be the heart of your base. As you progress, you'll find your first screwdriver. You can package up items to take with you, like this toolbox. The toolbox can be used to store items, but it's not that much space, so don't worry if you can't take this for now. You can't miss it, but the flashlight, make sure to take this because you'll need it for nighttime. If you see these email terminals, make sure to read them. They sometimes contain some item recipes. The kitchen of the cafeteria will be your first exposure to cooking. In here, your first ever knife. Using the knife or other sharp melee weapons, when you carve up enemy dead bodies, they may drop some food. You can place the raw parts onto a frying pan on a stove and it'll start cooking. It's embarrassing to admit, but I actually did not find this out during my first ever playthrough until about two hours in and I was dying for food in the game. If for some odd reason you don't have the frying pan on you, there is a makeshift version that you can make at the crafting table. Make your first crafting table, then your energy brick, kill your first ever peccary, and now it's time for the real game to begin. Once you walk through these doors, time will start ticking and your needs will start going down. You have about 30 real life minutes until it's nighttime, so let's get moving. Alternatively, you could make the cafeteria your base, but the location I'm picking out today will be closer to other resources sources so you don't have to keep lugging things back between the cafeteria and waste time. Right now, I'm following the normal pathing one would if they were playing for the first time, but all signs will have you going to office sector as your first ever location to explore. And in case you get a little bit lost, just follow our pathing here. Welcome to office sector, our home for now. Our inventory is full, so we're gonna make our way over to the area where we're gonna make our base. Going to the left, into the kitchenette, jumping over these couches, through the locker room and up the stairs, you'll find find the gym, and up these last set of stairs is where our base will be. Let's secure it by killing the peccary hiding up here. And once you're ready, go ahead and put up your crafting bench around here. In the room with the NPC next door, you'll find a desk, and next to it on the ground is a backpack. This backpack will grant you an extra row of inventory space. There is a better backpack hidden away at another secret location, just not too far from here, so we'll grab that in just a moment. If you have enough material, start building some storage crates for holding items. But 
but if you don't, just throw things on the floor, it won't disappear immediately, you'll be fine. This wooden crate right here can provide you with some wooden planks, so that way you can start making some storage crates if you lack that. You can also search all of these lockers for items, and there's a bathroom here to take care of all your bathroom needs. Let's go grab that better backpack. Using the entry of the office sector as a reference, head to the right side instead this time. Continue along the railing until you see a ladder. There you go, that's the one. You could try jumping from here, but let's take a safer approach just in case. You can risk it if you want, though. So, heading around, we find another way to the railing where the ladder is. Make your way down the ladder, and you'll find an area with a dead body with the better backpack. The security pack actually has three more slots than our previous backpack. But we'll be letting Chopsticks have this because we like the guy, he's nice. You can also grab the soil bag nearby for planting purposes. If you have enough space, take the box of screws because these are valuable. But you can head back after this because the rest of the area here, there's not really much else. Also, if you're playing with a buddy, be careful because they could fall off and there's no way to get out of this situation except to die. Huh, kinda wish I kept the backpack for myself, but oh well. With that out of the way, it's time to start sprucing up our base with the most useful things that we need to get. And of course, along the way, pick up any materials you have so that way you can have more things to make later. So get to smashing in the cubicles and break every single computer you see. With your screwdriver in hand, try to find any medkits on walls and unpack them for your own base. It can store your medical items, but not only that, but your crafting bench upgrades will require one so that way it can auto-heal you when you're standing by a craft bench. In the office sector, and really just about anywhere in the game, you can find these standing lamps. Take these. Standing lamps not only provide lighting for your base, but also they don't require power from a power socket. They operate on their own. And they work infinitely, so if you want unlimited light sources, they're your guys to go for. You can also light up your base by using wall torches. But if you can, try holding off on making these because the resources can be used to make other things for your base. And the final thing you want to look out for are water coolers. There's at least one in the gym locker room, but they're practically scattered throughout the game, and especially in the office sector cubicles. If your character is getting tired, it's time to make a bed, so how do we get one? Try packing up these couches. You have a 50% chance to pack these up successfully, so try your luck. If you get unlucky and happen to break all these couches here, there's actually some couches scattered throughout the cubicles and the office sector. Regardless whether you succeed or fail, you will get the recipe for the makeshift bed, and this will allow you to rest and set your spawn point. When you open up your crafting table, on the top right there are bench upgrades. Some of these include an auto heal when standing by the bench, the item transporter upgrade allows your crafting bench to take materials from nearby storage crates instead of just having it in your inventory at all times. And the bench warmer allows you to have your crafting bench warm you up when you're standing nearby it. Just take note of these upgrades, you really can't do most of them right now, but when you get to them, it'll pay off when you finally put it in. There are only four more items we need to make sure your base runs efficiently. You will need the battery, this will be a great way to keep your stuff going on overnight. By plugging the wall socket into the battery and then into an equipment, it can effectively go on overnight for a long time. Next, you'll want a plug strip. It's as it sounds, it becomes an extension that can power multiple devices at once. The portable stove needs no explanation. If you want to stay alive and eat, well, make one. All three are relatively easy to make. You can find all these materials located within the cubicles in the office sector. Go smash up a lot of computers, have fun. But there's just one more piece of equipment that we need for our base, the repair Repair and salvage station. With this, you can finally repair your broken items that I'm sure you're holding on to right now, and salvage ones that you don't need. You almost have all the materials needed to make this, but you're lacking one important one, the anvil. They're not that common to get, but there's one particular spot that's a little hidden away that you can get to an early anvil right now. Grab your flashlight, because this can only be done at night. Hey, I did say you can't avoid night forever, so time to brave it. When the clock strikes 9, the power goes off. It does get a bit chilly at night, it's harder to see, and the kind of scary security robot roams at night. Don't let him catch you or try to fight him because it's not worth the effort or resources at the moment. What you should be doing right now is heading back to the beginning of the game, the cafeteria. Make your way to the back of the cafeteria where the vents were. Go through the right vent, then the one in front of you. The fan that killed me earlier is now off. 
dismantle this metal scrap. There'll be a peccary in here, but you can ignore him. And also, if you have enough inventory space, pick up the 9mm ammo. Through the blue doors on the right is where we'll find the anvil. And although I said you can ignore the peccary, if you really want to pick the fight, you can, because he gets kind of annoying and gets in your way. In the same room, you'll also find some tomato seeds for planting, and also some more 9mm ammo. You won't get your first gun until later, but might as well collect the ammo for now. After that, make your mad dash back to the base, and you're free. If all of your equipment is off for now, don't worry because nighttime does not last as long as morning time. It's about a fraction of the time, even less than that. You could huddle in a corner until it's morning time, or go out and explore, up to you. If you hear some guy's voice in the middle of the night and see this creepy guy crawling everywhere, that's Coworker. Coworker is a good guy, if you want to call him that. He's friendly, he won't hurt you, and you can feed him food in exchange for staplers and pens. But that's the end of my guide. With this, you'll have a great start to your abiotic playthrough. The magic of this game is the exploration and the crazy things you'll find. So go out there and have fun, and if you die, don't worry, you'll just respawn and go back and collect your death bag. Oh, and if you ever have to go through security sector, don't. Thank you.